And then thirdly, uh, let's have a look at participation. Some of you may have seen uh, on the week between Christmas and New Year, uh, was recorded on the, the news, etc. The Equal Opportunities Commission uh, annual uh, analysis of what they call sex and power. Uh, it's the uh, assessment of where women are, sex and power, who runs Britain. And they look at uh, where uh, uh, women are uh, in terms of uh, positions of influence. So members of parliament, currently 19.5% uh, women members of parliament. Uh, local authority council leaders, 13.8%. And that's a pathetic number because for lots of women who want to engage in public life, engaging in their local council is one of the more easy ways, is one of the more accessible ways to uh, become involved. And yet still, council leaders, uh, 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 women only account for under 14%. Directors of FTSE 100 companies, 10.4%. So that's all very boising up there. Not many girls allowed, I'm afraid. Uh, editors of national newspapers, 17.4%. Chief executives of national sports bodies, 6.7%. Bear in mind we've got the 2012 Olympics coming up in this country and we need to use all of our efforts to ensure that the debate about how money is spent on those Olympics, whether it's in the, uh, the construction uh, of sites, whether it's in uh, the access to volunteering, whether it's in administration, or jobs of whatever sort. Uh, if we've only got 6.7% uh, women involved in those sports national bodies, we're going to have to get women in from somewhere else to make sure that the debate accepts uh, and understands that they've got to broaden their horizons a bit. Senior police officers, 12.3%. Police provide a service to the whole community. Do they provide that service as well as can be expected or as well as should be expected to everybody in the community if they are made up uh, of such a largely white uh, population, white male population? We don't have figures here for ethnic minority participation, but of course we know in the police service uh, that that is, uh, uh, is extremely low. High Court judges, uh, senior judiciary, 9.8%. On and on we go. University vice-chancellors, 13.2%. So, and trade union general secretaries, 23%. So all of these areas of our society, of public life, of influence, uh, of um, uh, social policy delivery where the percentage of women is so small in some of those areas that the opportunity to ensure that the debate that goes on which shapes uh, the, the policy, which shapes the way in which that policy is going to be delivered, uh, th th that does not include the voices of the diverse population that we have in this country, that's got to be very worrying because it can't be right that those policies are defined and determined uh, by just a very narrow group uh, uh, of people. And, of course, it's not just about the, getting people onto into positions, sitting on boards or on committees just for the sake of it all, which, you know, when you talk to some people about, well, we need more women on this, and we need more black people, more this, and whatever it might be, more young people... And people say, oh, you know, well, we can all do that. Well, it's not just about getting people to sit on committees. It's about that opportunity to influence, to ensure that the decisions take account of that really wide uh, perspective uh, of views from uh, different people. And for business, of course, there is a big business case to be made uh, for them to ensure that more people participate. Business wants to uh, be able to say to the people that they're providing goods and services to that we reflect the community we are providing those goods and services to. And actually, largely speaking, they don't. But it's much better for them, and they recognise it's better for them. Somehow or another, they can't get from recognising that it's better 
to be able to do those things to ensure that we have got uh, committees and, and boards uh, that are more reflective of society. They can't get from saying, yes, of course that's good, to somehow or another making it happen. Uh, the lack of uh, determination, imagination, whatever it might be, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. But, but more and more, business does recognise that it does need to address these issues. And for the country as a whole, there is something of a dilemma here, because on the one hand, uh, we do need more women to participate in the labour market. We've got, uh, in most parts of the country, a very, very full labour market. We, we're looking for uh, people to participate. There's lots of areas of the country where uh, companies are looking for workers, they haven't got the skills, etc., etc. Um, and the government, of course, in order to be uh, re-elected, needs to demonstrate that it's shown an interest in women. They need to demonstrate that they've, uh, they're going to be able to win over the women's vote. And yet, uh, on the other hand, uh, we have, along with the rest of Europe, a falling birth rate, uh, of, of uh, reducing uh, number of people in the country of working age who can support the increasing number of people of retirement age. It's not quite so bad in the United Kingdom as it is in the rest of Europe, partly because we have an immigration policy which allows more people to come in from other countries and to fill those gaps. But in Italy, Spain, France, Germany, for example, they are in dire straits in terms of their uh, demographic future. The numbers of people in the country are dropping rapidly. Some of you may have read in the paper last week that the French government has increased its uh, support for women to be able to participate in the labour market and bring up a family. They've increased their support for childcare, increased family allowances, increased uh, flexible working arrangements, etc. Italy last year for the first time established a very wide-ranging childcare policy uh, providing subsidised childcare for women because women in Italy are not having children because they can't go out to work and have children at the same time. So uh, the state has recognised those things. So there is this dilemma. You know, how do we uh, ensure that we have women participating and how do we provide the wherewithal to make sure that they can and do participate uh, without uh, A, that costing a, an absolute fortune and B, without upsetting uh, uh, everybody else who doesn't want to pay more tax, etc. So, again, in order to ensure that those policies are right, uh, that they uh, uh, are discussed and developed and delivered, you do have to have a variety of voices uh, younger as well as older, male as well as female, around that cabinet table, making sure that those policies don't fall off uh, the agenda.